The Phoenix Theatre and Arts Company's audio drama series presents Poems from Currer, Ellis, and Acton Bell Written by the Bronte Sisters Curated by Jenna Isabella and Gina Stanton And directed by Gina Stanton For past episodes, upcoming events, and other information Make sure to visit our website at phoenixtheaterartsco.com That's theater with an R-E Without further ado, we give you Poems from Kerr, Alice, and Acton Bell. The Wood by Currer Bell But two miles more and then we rest. While there is still an hour of day and long the brightness of the west will light us on our devious way. Sit then a while here in this wood. So total is the solitude we safely may delay. These massive roots afford a seat which seems for weary travelers made. Their rest. The air is soft and sweet in this sequestered forest glade, and there are scents of flowers around. The evening dew draws from the ground, how soothingly they spread. Yes, I was tired, but not at heart. No, that beats full of sweet content. For now I have my natural part of action with adventure blent. Cast forth on the wide world with thee, and all my once waste energy to weighty purpose bent. Yet, <laughs> sayest thou, spies around us roam, our aims are termed conspiracy? Happily no more our English home and anchorage for us may be. That there is risk our mutual blood may redden in some lonely wood the knife of treachery? Sayest thou that where we lodge each night in each lone farm or lonelier hall of Norman Pier, ere morning light suspicion must as duly fall as day returns. Such vigilance presides and watches over France, such rigor governs all. I fear not, William. Dost thou fear? So that the knife does not divide, it may be ever hovering near, I could not tremble at thy side, and strenuous love, like mine for thee, is buckler strong against treachery, and turns its stab aside. I am resolved that thou shalt learn to trust my strength as I trust thine. I am resolved our souls shall burn with equal, steady, mingling shine. Part of the field is conquered now, our lives in the same channel flow along the self-same line, and while no groaning storm is heard, thou seemest content it should be so. But soon as comes a warning word of danger, straight thine anxious brow bends over me a mournful shade, as doubting if my powers are made to ford the floods of woe. No, then it is my spirit swells, and drinks with eager joy the air of freedom. Where at last it dwells, chartered, a common task to share with thee. And then it stirs alert, and pants to learn what menaced hurt demands for thee its care. Remember, I have crossed the deep, and stood with thee on deck, to gaze on waves that rose in threatening heap, while stagnant lay a heavy haze, dimly confusing sea with sky and baffling, even the pilot's eye, intent to thread the maze of rocks on Britain's dangerous coast, and find a way to steer our band to the one point obscure, which lost, flung us as victims on the strand. All elsewhere gleamed the Gaelic sword, and not a wherry could be moored along the guarded land. I feared not then, I fear not now. The interest of each stirring scene wakes a new sense, a welcome glow. In every nerve and bounding vein, alike on turbid channel sea, or in still wood of Normandy, I feel as born again. The rain descended that wild morn when, anchoring in the cove at last, our band, all weary and forlorn, ashore, like wave-worn sailors cast sought for a sheltering roof in vain, and scarce could scanty food obtain to break their morning fast. Thou didst thy crust with me divide, thou didst thy cloak around me fold, and sitting silent by thy side, I ate the bread in peace untold. 
given kindly from thy hand, to a sweet as costly fare or princely treat on royal plate of gold. Sharp blew the sleet upon my face, and rising wild, the gusty wind drove on those thundering waves apace our crew so late had left behind. But spite of frozen shower and storm, so close to thee my heart beat warm, and tranquil slept my mind. So now, nor footsore nor oppressed with walking all this August day, I taste in heaven this brief rest. This gypsy halt beside the way. England's wild flowers are fair to view, like balm is England's summer dew, like gold her sunset ray. But the white violets growing here are sweeter than I have yet have seen, and ne'er did dew so pure and clear distill on forest mosses green. As now called forth by summer heat, her fumes are cool and fresh retreat, these fragrant limes between. That sunset, look beneath the boughs, over the copse beyond the hills, how soft, yet deep and warm it glows, and heaven with rich suffusion fills, with hues where still the opal's tint, its gleam of poisoned fire is blent, where flame through azure thrills. Depart we now, for fast will fade that solemn splendor of decline, and deep must be the aftershade as stars alone to night will shine. No moon is destined, pale, to gaze on such a day's vast phoenix blaze, a day in fires decayed. There, hand in hand we tread again the mazes of this varying wood, and soon amid a cultured plain, girt in with fertile solitude, we shall our resting place descry, marked by one roof tree towering high above a farmstead rude, refreshing ere long with rustic fare. We'll seek a couch of dreamless ease. Courage will guard thy heart from fear, and love give mine divinest peace. Tomorrow brings dangerous toil, and through its conflict and turmoil will pass as God shall please. To Imagination by Ellis Bell When weary with the long day's care and earthly change from pain to pain and lost and ready to despair, a kind voice calls me back again. Oh, my true friend, I am not alone. Mal then can speak with such a tone. So hopeless is the world without. The world within I doubly prize. Thy world where guile and hate and doubt and cold suspicion never rise, where thou and I in liberty have disputed sovereignty, that all around danger and guilt and darkness lie. If but within our bosoms bound, we hold a bright untroubled sky warm with ten thousand mingled rays of suns that know no winter days. Reason indeed may oft complain for nature's sad reality, and tell the suffering heart how vain its cherished dreams must always be. And truth may rudely trample down the flowers of fancy newly blown. Bring the hovering vision back, and breathe new glories o'er the blighted spring, and call a lovelier life from death, and whisper, face divine, of real worlds as bright as thine. It's not to thy phantom bliss, yet still in evening's quiet hour. In never-failing thankfulness, I welcome thee, benignant power. Sure solacer of human cares, and sweeter hope than hope despairs. The Student's Serenade by Acton Bell I have slept upon my couch, but my spirit did not rest. For the labors of the day, yet my weary soul oppressed. And before my dreaming eyes, still the learned volumes lay. And I could not close their leaves, and I could not turn away. But I oped my eyes at last, and I heard a muffled sound. Twas the night breeze come to say that the snow was on the ground. 
Then I knew that there was rest on the mountain's bosom free. So I left my fevered couch, and I flew to waken thee. I have flown to waken thee, for if thou wilt not arise, then my soul can drink no peace from these holy moonlight skies. And this waste of virgin snow to my sight will not be fair, unless thou wilt smile and come, love, to wander with me there. Then awake, Maria, wake! For if thou couldst only know how the quiet moonlight sleeps on this wilderness of snow, and the groves of ancient trees in their snowy garb arrayed, till they stretch into the gloom of the distant valley's shade. I know thou wouldst rejoice to inhale this bracing air, thou wouldst break thy sweetest sleep to behold a scene so fair. O'er these wintry wilds, alone, thou wouldst joy to wander free, and it will not please thee less though that bliss be shared with me. The Teacher's Monologue by Currer Bell The room is quiet. Thoughts alone people its mute tranquility. The yoke put on, the long task done. I am, as it is bliss to be, still and untroubled. Now I see for the first time how soft the day o'er a waveless water, stirless tree, silent and sunny, wings its way. Now, as I watch that distant hill, so faint, so blue, so far removed, sweet dreams of home my heart may fill, that home where I am known and loved. It lies beyond, yon azure brow parts me from all earth holds for me. And, morn and eve, my yearnings flow thitherward tending, changelessly. My happiest hours, I, all the time I love to keep in memory, lapsed among moors, ere life's first prime decayed to dark anxiety. Sometimes, I think a narrow heart makes me thus mourn those far away, and keeps my love so far apart from friends and friendship of today. Sometimes, I think tis but a dream I measure up so jealously, all the sweet thoughts I live on seem to vanish into vacancy. And then, this strange coarse world around seems all that's palpable and true, and every sight and every sound combines my spirit to subdue to aching grief. So void and lone is life and earth, so worse than vain, the hopes that, in my own heart sown, and cherished by such an rain, as joy and transient sorrow shed, have ripened to a harvest there. Alas, methinks I hear it said, thy golden sheaves are empty air. All fades away, my very home I think will soon be desolate. I hear, at times, a warning come of bitter partings at its gate. And, if I should return and see the hearth fire quenched, the vacant chair, and hear it whispered mournfully, that farewells have been spoken there. What shall I do, and whither turn? Where look for peace, when cease to mourn? Tis not the air I wished to play, the strain I wished to sing. My willful spirit slipped away and struck another string. I neither wanted smile nor tear, bright joy nor bitter woe, but just a song that sweet and clear, though haply sad, might flow. A quiet song, to solace me when sleep refused to come. A strain to chase despondency when sorrowful for home. In vain I try, I cannot sing. All feels so cold and dead. No wild distress, no gushing spring of tears in anguish shed. But all the impatient gloom of one who waits a distant day. When, some great task of suffering done, repose shall toil repay. For youth departs, and pleasure flies, and life consumes away, and youth's rejoicing ardor dies beneath this drear delay. And patience, weary with her yoke, is yielding to despair, and health's elastic springers broke beneath the strain of care. Life will be gone ere I have lived. Why are now is life's first prime? I've worked and studied, longed and grieved through all that rosy time. 
to toil, to think, to long, to grieve. Is such my future fate? The morn was dreary, must the eve be also desolate? Well, such a life at least makes death a welcome, wished-for friend. Then, aid me, reason, patience, faith, to suffer to the end. Stars by Ellis Bell Ah, uh, why, because the dazzling sun restored our earth to joy, have you departed, everyone, and left a desert sky? All through the night your glorious eyes were gazing down in mine, and with a full heart's thankful sighs I blessed that watch divine. I was at peace and drank your beams as they were life to me, and reveled in my changeful dreams like petrol on the sea. Thought followed thought, star followed star through boundless regions on, while one sweet influence near and far thrilled through and proved us one. Why did the morning dawn to break so great, so pure a spell, and scorch with fire the tranquil cheek while your cool radiance fell? Blood red he rose and arrow straight, his fierce beam struck my brow, the soul of nature sprang elate, but mine sunk sad and low. My lids closed down, yet through their veil I saw him blazing still, and steep in gold the misty dale and flash upon the hill. I turned me to the pillow then, to call back night, and see your worlds of solemn light again throb my heart and me. It would not do, the pillow glowed, and glowed both roof and floor, and birds sang loudly in the wood, and fresh winds shook the door. The curtains waved, the wakened flies were murmuring around my room, imprisoned there till I should rise and give them leave to roam. O oh, stars and dreams and gentle night, O oh, night and stars return, and hide me from the hostile light that does not warm, but burn, that drains the blood of suffering men, drinks tears instead of dew. Let me sleep through his blinding rain and only wake with you. The Arbor by Acton Bell I'll rest me in this sheltered bower, and look upon the clear blue sky that smiles upon me through the trees, which stand so thick clustering by, and view their green and glossy leaves all glistening in the sunshine fair, and list the rustling of their boughs so softly whispering through the air. And while my ear drinks in the sound, my winged soul shall fly away, reviewing lone departed years as one mild, beaming autumn day, and soaring on to future scenes, like hills and woods and valleys green, all basking in the summer sun, but distant still and dimly seen. O oh, list! Tis summer's very breath that gently shakes the rustling trees. But look, the snow is on the ground. How can I think of scenes like these? Tis but the frost that clears the air and gives the sky that lovely blue. They're smiling in a winter's sun, those evergreens of somber hue. And winter's chill is on my heart. How can I dream of future bliss? How can my spirit soar away, confined by such a chain as this? p Tax Audio Drama Series is a production by the Phoenix Theatre and Arts Company. This week's episode, Poems from Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell, was written by the Bronte sisters, curated by Jenna Isabella and Gina Stanton, and directed and edited by Gina Stanton. This episode features the vocal talents of Amanda Booth, Jennifer Wallace, Emma Burke Kovitz, Samantha Sanishin, Jenna Isabella, and Gina Stanton. Original PTAC music by Brian Sanishin. For a full listing of credits, visit us at phoenixtheaterartsco.com. That's theater with an R-E. While you're there, please consider clicking the donate link. That would be delightful. 
Have comments or questions? Email us at phoenixtheaterartsco at gmail.com or find us on social media. A very special thank you to our Patreon subscribers. With a shout out to those sitting in the box seats, Ken Shelby and Diane Stanton. We couldn't do this without you. Join us next time for The Remarkable Rocket. <laughs>